All right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we're gonna to look at my persimmon trees. I'd like to show you guys a number of different varieties, different trees of different ages that we have here on the property. We're growing in the Philadelphia area and I wanna look at the fruit set. Right now, we are just now past the second drop phase, it's called. So in the beginning, when the fruits set, or at least when the fruits, uh, excuse me, when the tree flowers, we then end up having a lot of flowers and the tree then rejects a lot of the flowers, even though they do get pollinated. And then the tree then drops most of the fruits to the ground. But recently we've now been experiencing a second drop phase, which is, which is normal. It's just part of growing persimmons. You can see here some fallen persimmons there on the ground. But now that we're past that, I can definitely look at the trees, look at the crops on the trees and make a determination as to really what my harvest is gonna look like. And I have to say, this year, finally, on this Rosianca persimmon, this is a cross between the American, an American persimmon and an Asian persimmon. This one now, finally in its seventh or eighth year, is producing a lot of fruit or at least something that I can live with, <laughs> you know, for at least the size of the tree, how old it is, uh, how much space it takes up, how many leaves are on the tree. At least I, I can deal with this. And this is exactly what I want. This is like my, believe it or not, my dream come true. If I could have one fruit dream come true, it'd probably be to have a tree like this. Um, my second dream would probably be something involving finding a really special fig, <laughs> which I've, I actually have dreamt before. I'm not kidding. Um, but this tree now is, is coming into its own, I have to say. It's really doing what it, it should. Last year, it finally put out some a decent crop. I think we got about 30 of these um, smaller American-sized persimmons that this tree will produce. They're of really good quality, actually. Um, not my favorite in the yard but they are very very good especially when perfectly ripened if you can get these to ripen before frost you know you got something special there um this variety though last year did ripen after frost and i think that did diminish the quality because the frost will kind of speed up that ripening process on the trees rather than letting it naturally progress and naturally happen. Um, this fruit I typically harvest around Christmas time. There isn't a ton up here at the top, but there is actually some in, even in the center of the tree where I would have thought it was less shady. Now what I did to this tree in particular, now that it's getting older, I cleaned up the bottom, cleaned up the skirt of the tree. I removed a number of scaffolds this year. Um, and I also came through this year and removed a lot of the dead growth. So if there was anything that, that was dead or even the growth here in the center or even in this shadier part here that we're looking at, I removed anything that really didn't have any, um, any fruits on it. So if it has a branch basically lower down here on the tree, I kept it. But for the most part, I removed a lot of the growth. And that's just to try to help the tree get more photosynthesis and more light to these fruits and kind of crossing my fingers there in hopes that the tree will not reject these fruits. Um, and I think, you know, it's probably just in general a better use of the tree's energy. Now at the top, and really anywhere on this tree, I've been doing a lot of summer pruning. I've already done two rounds. We're in early August here. And I've already done two rounds of summer pruning all over the tree. I need to do a third round because now the tree is then resuming growth again on some of these branches at the top there. Um, but this should hopefully what the summer pruning is doing is actually uh, encouraging the tree to branch out a little bit here at the top. Like here's the perfect example. See that branch up there where I made a cut? You can see where I made that cut. There's a little stub there at the top and then it branched out into two different branches. So by having more branching, rather than these long lanky shoots, like this is a good example here of a nice water shoot. 
this will probably flower next year but if i made a cut right here and then this now starts to branch out rather than just growing one long shoot then i have a lot more chance of getting flowers and more flowers and the more flowers i have what i'm noticing the more fruits i can potentially have now there's a lot of other caveats to that and i think you know in the past that tree has has had no problem flowering there's been just an overabundance of flowers so even though i have an overabundance of flowers it doesn't mean that i'm going to get fruits because they could still drop but now that the tree is now holding on to most of its fruits or at least a good crop i'd rather try to encourage the tree to have more flowers in the future and that way we can see more success so here we have some younger trees that I've planted. This is, I think, uh, Guang Yang, if I'm not mistaken. Here is my oldest Seijo on the property. Uh, I was surprised that neither one of these two flowered this year, but they have not put out any flowers. It is a bit shady here in these spots. It's also been very dry this year. So did the summer pruning, and now they're finally resuming this growth. And I don't think... I will get the effect that I saw on the Rosianca. Uh, so really that summer pruning is just meant to kind of encourage the tree to hopefully flower a little bit more next year. But the main goal of that I think is mainly for form, controlling the size and setting up the form of the tree in a better way. Uh, we also have two trees right here that are of good size. And then this is a younger Seijo I grafted that's finally getting some size and some light. And this one will eventually get larger next year, I imagine. It may look like the tree, one of the trees we just looked like we just looked at over there. Over here, though, are we have a proc, which is an American persimmon. It grows rather large and very quickly, and you can tell by these large leaves. These American trees, very different than the Asian persimmon, they grow very quickly. And they put out very large leaves. Um, and they put out typically more fruits but they're of smaller smaller size and in my opinion typically tastier believe it or not um here you can see some pretty good set here on the proc i don't believe this celebrity persimmon actually has any fruits this year it did set some and then they dropped uh there may be one or two fruits on this but i'm not holding out for this one this is a tree that's really struggled actually in the past so it's good to see that it's actually growing and getting established but the proc's doing pretty decent. There isn't, I would say, a huge fruit set, but it's good enough, at least for me, because this is my favorite persimmon. It is also very early. Um, so this will ripen before frost, and this, I think, will ripen probably middle of September, early October, I'll get my first one. So we're not that far away. I'm probably... 45 to 60 days away from that tree putting out some very very high quality persimmons and i think a lot of that is really just due, due to the fact like i said it'll ripen before frost but i do enjoy the flavor because it does produce a date like raisin like flavor to it uh, that rum raisin flavor that some people have described in the past we also have over here three trees in the front of the house different sizes different ages you can see here this is my miss kim this is the tree that sets a ridiculous amount of persimmons and we just had we went through the second drop phase here so i'm good i'm glad to see that now it's dropping fruits because i was worried that it was going to overbear um you can see down here on the ground I probably thinned about 100, 200 persimmons off of this tree by hand because it sets so many of them. And now it'll drop most of them by the second drop phase. But in this first phase, I, I kind of wanted to make sure that it wasn't overbearing itself. And there's still plenty left on these trees. Uh, this is the most precocious, heaviest bearing persimmon I've ever seen. Um, and it's not even close so for me i'm a big fan of this tree now i think because it does set too many fruits actually 
we're not getting the energy required the, the sugars it doesn't produce enough sugar so we need about 20 ish leaves for every persimmon and i don't know if that's that was met last year or in prior years so for me it's never it's not really been the tastiest persimmon i grow but this year i think we may have i'm gonna have to do some math do some hard looking at this tree uh to see how many fruits we actually got and how many leaves are on the tree to make a determination as to really if this is going to produce of high quality fruit that i would expect but uh right next to it is an itchy jiro and this is the first year it's actually producing for me it's been flowering for a couple years now but nothing ever holds so it's good to see that this thing is, is putting out lots of fruit actually this is also an earlier variety and I believe this, the Miss Kim, well, I think this will probably produce sometime in October, but Miss Kim uh, typically will produce at the very end of the season, um, around frost time. So that's like November 1st and maybe even into November. But there's a lot of fruits on this tree. Itchy Jiro, it's supposed to be one of the earliest the earliest um, Asian non-astringent types, Fuyu type. I don't know when this Tam Cam ripens. This is the first year I'm seeing flowers or fruit, and I'm seeing a lot of fruit. This tree seems to be very, very productive. And here in zone seven, seven A, it seems to be quite hardy. So all these trees are doing well. I don't expect any of them to ever really take cold damage. And this is a really heavy bearing tree. I don't know if this one's gonna do well in terms of fruit quality this year. That's my one concern, because there is a lot of fruit. And we have, I have seen the second drop already happen. So maybe I will at this point make a judgment on some of these trees and remove some, but it's hard, it's really hard for me to remove pers any persimmon on any of my trees because they're just really my, my favorite fruit. It's just such a special fruit. To me and you know having more persimmons than i know what to do with again is like a dream come true so that are all that those are the, all the trees on the property we have grafted a couple new ones we tried anyway oh i do have a nikita's gift over there that we just we passed it's really small and young and i also grafted some over there but we're trying to get more trees trying to definitely get more trees um because again, it is really my favorite fruit. It produces the highest quality fruit here consistently, reliably. And to me, you can have them all winter time in, in a variety of different ways. Here's a young seedling I've grafted to for two years in a row. It just has not taken. So we'll try again next year, I guess. But um, those, those are the persimmons here on the property, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. As the fruits ripen, of course, I will cover them. We'll talk about more about the flavor. Um, if I decide to do some thinning, we'll talk about that. But for the most part, I'm not really sure what else you guys want to see on these trees. This was a nice little update. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you soon, all right? Take care. Hit that subscribe button. Oh, and check out the other videos we've done now on persimmons. Thank you guys. Take care.